Hi folks, Astronomy Live here. It's time once more to talk about the images from Stereo Behind in 2007 as an object transited through the Core 2 imager and eventually over the Sun. Now I've covered this in previous videos, but Dr. Claudia Albers is making the claim once again that this is not the Moon, but is instead a brown dwarf captured by Stereo. So, as I've covered in previous videos, the position and size of the object match the expected position and size of the moon uh, from the perspective of stereo behind. And you can see this for yourself by taking the, the orbital elements of stereo behind and loading them into a simulation like ORSA. And that's what I've done here. And I've overlaid the images produced by ORSA on top of the original stereo behind images from the stereo website. And you can see that the position and size of the object matches the expected position and size of the moon at that time. It transits the sun and then it comes back out and goes out the right side of the screen. You can even directly calculate this as I've done in a spreadsheet which I've previously presented as well. But I've now expanded that spreadsheet's capabilities to include the ability to calculate earth shine because as that object entered the field of view it appeared to be illuminated uh, and Yet, if you look at the date, February 20th, 2007, uh, you wouldn't expect the moon to be all that well illuminated because it should have been a very thin crescent. However, it was being illuminated by reflected light from the Earth. We call that Earth shine. The sun's light reflecting off the Earth illuminates the dark side of the moon when the crescent is very thin. Uh, as the moon's phase starts to expand, from the perspective of the moon, the Earth's phase starts to shrink, and so the moon receives less and less light from the Earth, and that effect begins to fade out. However, early in the lunar cycle, you can see the moon illuminated by Earth shine quite well, and there, that is definitely the case here in these stereo images. So let's get going and take a look here. This is a raw FITS file from the stereo behind core 2 imager. And you can see the moon here in the image. So in the top right corner of the screen, there's a box here that will show an expanded view of what I'm pointing at. And this image has been processed from the raw FITS file to bring out the details of the stars and the moon itself, sacrificing uh, the sun's uh, glare and creating sort of a strange effect there in the center of the image. But the point of this was to bring out the stars so that the image could be astrometrically solved. Because one of the things about these raw images, this is from the raw FITS files, not the JPEGs, and so it hasn't been processed at all. And that means it hasn't even been aligned relative to the ecliptic. It's a, a simply the raw shot straight from the stereo behind Core 2 Imager CCD. And those images get processed in a variety of ways before being turned into JPEGs and put up on the stereo website. And one of the, uh, one of the steps in the processing is aligning it to the ecliptic. So we can do that here now that the image has been astrometrically solved. So I'm selecting the ecliptic as the uh, coordinate system to align to, and then I align the image. And you can see it's rotated quite a bit from uh, the than from the perspective you have when you first open the image. So what I've done is I've processed a variety of images from the start of this transit where you can see the moon illuminated as it enters the field of view. I've processed those images to bring in as much detail as possible in the moon and you can see them put together here in an animation. Then what I did is I took uh, a selection of images and oriented them relative to the ecliptic, and also oriented them relative to Earth's illumination of the moon, because the illumination coming from the Earth is not perfectly in line to the ecliptic, and so there's a rotation there as well. So if you look at the spreadsheet I've uh, developed here for calculating all of this, you simply plug in the date, and it gives you the uh, coordinates of the moon in pixels, the moon's radius in pixels, and the Earth's position in pixels, which you can see would be outside the 1024 by 1024 images. So the Moon is definitely orbiting the Earth, but the Earth is outside the field of view, which is why you don't see it. But you do see the Earth's illumination of the Moon via Earthshine. And according to these calculations, Earthshine at this point in time, uh, 
4 hours 2 minutes universal time on February 20th should have been illuminating the moon about 90%. But that illumination has a position angle of negative 11 degrees. So the images uh, from the stereo behind spacecraft at that time are rotated clockwise, have to be rotated clockwise to achieve uh, an alignment to the ecliptic. However, they have to be rotated back negative 11 degrees or 11 degrees counterclockwise in this case to uh, position the moon so that it's vertical relative to uh, Earth's illumination of it. And that's what I've done in order to render how much of the moon would have been expected to be uh, to be illuminated uh, by Earthshine. And you can see that as a GIF animation here. I've taken three images, plugged in the numbers given by the spreadsheet to render a blue line which represents where the terminator of Earthshine should occur. Most programs that are out there don't necessarily take this into account. Uh, for example, Celestia will show you the perspective stereo behind would have had of the moon and what the moon should have looked like from the perspective of stereo behind at that time, but it does not render Earthshine. So I've had to render that myself using the spreadsheet. And then if we take this image, which again shows the perspective uh, that stereo behind should have had on the moon at that time, and overlay it back on top of the actual raw FITS files, what do we see? We see it's a perfect match for the surface features seen in those images. So it's definitely the moon. It has all the same surface features as the moon. It has the exact amount of illumination we would expect from Earthshine, and it's exactly where we would expect the moon to be. So by all accounts, it really is the moon, not a brown dwarf. Hope that answers your questions, but if you have any more questions about this event, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.